John Glenn's $40 drugstore camera made NASA reevaluate the importance photography would play in their future space missions. They quickly realized how well photography resonated with the public, especially from the vantage point of outer space. This is the Ansco Auto Set. In 1962, it cost $40 plus a few extra bucks for two rolls of film. And this is that same camera after NASA engineers quickly modified it before John Glenn's historic orbit of the Earth. It was with this camera astronaut John Glenn took the first human-captured colored still photographs of the Earth during his three-orbit mission on February 20th, 1962. The Ansco Auto Set is a camera made by Minolta. It was introduced in the early 1960s and was sold in the United States. It also was one of the first automatic exposure cameras on the market at the time, which is probably why John Glenn bought it in the first place. You wouldn't have to fiddle with aperture or shutter speed or anything because the camera picks everything. There's actually no manual exposure on this camera. The Ansco Auto Set is a 35mm film camera with a fixed 45mm lens with an aperture range of f2 to f16. The camera also has a built-in selenium light meter. The light meter is designed for 35mm film with ISO ranges from 6 all the way up to 1600. And here's the cool part, batteries are not required for the operation of this camera. Everything is mechanically operated. In 1962, photography hadn't even been a thought to NASA. Their primary concern at the time was getting a human into space and back to Earth safely. Really, photography was not even a thought. To illustrate how photography wasn't even on their minds at the time, they, originally, they weren't even going to put windows in the space vehicles. That's bonkers to me, but they eventually put the windows in for two main reasons. The first reason being they felt bad for these guys being jammed into a claustrophobic space because you're shoving these humans into what was the equivalent of a 55-gallon drum. And also, they knew they were dealing with pilots, and I guess pilots are divas when it comes to seeing where they're going, which makes sense, I guess. The launch date for this historic mission was originally scheduled for January 16th, 1962, but it was postponed 10 times due to technical issues and weather conditions. I only mention this because everything I've been able to find on this topic makes it seem like John Glenn went out and bought this Ansco auto set camera just days before the February 20th launch and not the original launch date of January 16th, which I think is fascinating and important because had it not been postponed, maybe this would not have ever happened and maybe we wouldn't have seen these photographs. And then maybe this would not have affected NASA to reevaluate their opinion on photography and how it relates to their space program. Here's where we get into the fun part. OG of camera hacks, John Glenn and the NASA engineers. To make the camera usable with his bulky astronaut gloves, the engineers flipped the camera upside down so they could attach a pistol grip with special buttons to control both the shutter and film advance. Once and again, because it's automatic exposure, all you gotta worry about is taking the photo and advancing to the next frame. They even moved the eyepiece to the bottom, which is now the top of the camera because they had flipped it and put the pistol grip on there. When John Glenn eventually made it into outer space, he said the camera was really easy to use and he actually used the zero gravity advantages to his advantage. He's quoted with saying, when I needed both hands, I just let go of the camera and it floated there in front of me. I was also able to find out that NASA ultrasonically spliced two rolls of film together and then they were loaded into the camera, not like your typical canister, but with a different mechanism that you could only open with a special NASA screwdriver, which is actually kind of cool because that gave Glenn the option to shoot up to 70 photos. He shot 48 frames during his three orbit mission, which lasted four hours and 55 minutes, traveling at five miles a second, a second, not per hour, and viewing three sunsets and sunrises. John Glenn is credited with being the pioneer of space photography, and he did it all with a camera that was just a mere toy, if you really think about it. John Glenn was just like any other traveler. You know, he wanted to have a photographic record of his historic 1962 flight. This was going to be the greatest adventure of his life, and he knew it. It was going to be even better than all of his previous wartime and test pilot adventures. So naturally, like anyone, he wanted to document it. You got speed, John Glenn. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, ignition, three, two, one, zero. Roger, left off. Roger, the top is not reading. We're underway. Roger, reading your line. Right, this is range of the radar. We are not in the air. One, four. Roger, roger. 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 Roger, backup clock is started. Roger, we're go. How about systems? Systems is go. Brain safety, still brain. Yellow, 102, 101, oxygen 78, 100, AMS 27. Roger, loud and clear. Program right down the line. Right down the line. Now you ride over. Okay, fine, we're still busy. I want to get a mark. There's some vibration area coming up here now. Thank you. Roger, reading a loud and clear, John. It's some oscillations, but they seem to be dense for one. That's affirmative. Roger, reading you loud and clear. Roger, reading you loud and clear. Flight path looks good. Pitch 25, stand by for go. Here, Pico. Pico. Confirms Pico. 
If you love all things photography like I do, then go ahead and join the community that we are building here on YouTube by subscribing down below. And as always, if you have any feedback, comments, questions, or corrections, leave them in the comments. I do read them all. Peace out, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.